A flask contains 300 centimeter cube of dilute sodium hydroxide of this concentration. First question says calculate the number of moles. Okay, that's a nice easy one because we can just use C equals to N over V. And so the concentration is 0 0.167. Volume, be careful. This is in decimeters. This is in centimeters. So we need to convert the centimeters to decimeters. And to do that, you divide with 1,000. So this will actually be 0 0.3. Now, if you had to uh, work this out, you would have to multiply like that. And this will give us 0 0.05 moles. 0 0.05 mole. Uh, where can we write that? 0 0.05. Ethanoic acid of volume 500 centimeter cube. Okay, well, let's first draw a picture of what we have so far. What we have so far is we have a container filled with NaOH and it has it's 300 centimeters cubed and a concentration of 0.167. Okay, now it says ethanoic acid with a volume of 500 and an unknown concentration is now added to the flask to make 800. That makes sense because 500 plus 300 is 800. So there's no rocket science there. Okay, so we're going to take uh, some ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH, like we see over there. And this one is 500 centimeters cubed, but X for the concentration. Okay, and they're going to add these two together into one flask. So if you want, we could actually go and draw it out as one big flask, which is 300 centimeter cube of the NaOH and then 500 centimeter cube of the CH3 COOH. Okay, so they're just adding those two together to make that over there. Right, now it says, it is found that the pH of the mixture is 11.4. The balanced equation, there we go. First question, calculate the concentration of the OH minus in the mixture. Okay, so that's a quite an easy one because we know that uh, pH, pH is equal to negative log of H3O plus concentration. Okay, so we could say that the pH is 11.4. So we could say 11.4 equals to negative log of the H3O plus. And I'll show you a second way to do this. Some learners like to use this formula, P, pH plus P of OH equals 14. I'll show you that method as well. Okay, so, uh, but now I'm just using a different method. Right now I'm using the KW method. Okay, so we could then say that um, okay, so we've got, I'm going to take the negative to the left. So we're going to say negative 11.4 equals to the log of H3O plus. Now, remember that there's actually a 10 over there because it's a standard log. So you've got to remember how to get this by itself. So you're going to say this number to the power of this number. So 10 to the negative 11.4 equals to this. Okay. And so if you had to go work that out, you end up with 3.98, 3.98 times 10 to the negative 12. And that's a concentration, so it's moles per decimeter. Then you could use the KW formula. Uh, do they tell us what temperature we are at? Okay, so technically they have made a bit of a mistake here. They, they, they should tell us that we are at 25 degrees because we know that at 25 degrees we've got a KW formula um, that is equal to this. But then I went and looked on their memo and they did use this formula anyways, okay? So it's not like we have to use something different, but they should have told us at 25 degrees because this formula at 25 degrees is equal to 10 to the negative 14. Okay, so we know this value now. They, we've just calculated that, so we can then go and do this, multiplied by 3.98 times 10 to the negative 12 equals to 10 to the negative 14. So then you could get the OH minus by itself by just dividing this on the other side. After you do that, you should end up with 2.51 times 10 to the uh, negative 3 
and that's going to be in mole per decimeter. Okay, if you prefer the P, this formula here, let me show you how that would, this one actually works quite nicely, I won't lie. Uh, let's quickly talk about that one. Oh wait, the first part all stays the same. Oh no, it doesn't, I lie, I lie, I lie. Um, sorry, what we'll do is we'll do the following. Okay, let's just write this answer down here. Okay, mole per decimeter. Okay, method two, method number Two. So if you what what you can then do is you could say okay the pH is eleven point four. Now there is a formula that goes pH plus p of OH is equal to, and that is always equal to fourteen. Now if we know that the pH is eleven point four, then we can say eleven point four equals to whoops plus um, pOH equals to fourteen. You could then solve for pOH and you should end up with. 2.6, okay, so 2.6, and then you can just say, okay, so if we know that there's this formula, pH is equal to negative log of H3O plus, well then pOH is equal to negative log of OH minus. And so we know this value, this value is 2.6, and then there's a little 10 here, and then you can just do what we did earlier, where you could then say, negative 2.6 equals to log 10 of OH minus, and so OH minus concentration will be um, 10 to the negative 2.6, and so that would end up giving you, let's draw the right side of here. Yep, same answer, 2.51 times 10 to the negative 3 mole per decimeter. Okay, so it's going to be um, 2.51 times 10 to the negative 3 mole per decimeter. This question over here says, um, calculate the initial concentration of the ethanoic acid solution. Okay, let's have a bit of a chat. So what we've spoken about before is when you add an acid and a base together. Okay, so if you add equal, okay, so I've, I've, I have showed this before, but let's go do it again. So one, two. So in scenario one, you add equal stoichiometric amounts. So you add just the right amount of each type, okay? So graphically that could look something like this. You add the perfect amount of acid and the perfect amount of base. Now remember, when you add an acid and a base together, they fight each other and they neutralize each other. And so if you add just the right amount stoichiometrically of each one, then at the end, there will be no acid or base left over. So no acid or base left over. And so therefore, pH will be seven. It'll be a perfectly neutral scenario. In situation number two, let's say you add more acid than base. And remember, I'm talking about stoichiometrically. What that means is that I'm looking at the ratios from the balanced equation as well. And even after looking at those ratios, if we have added more acid than base, then, okay, so let me, let me try to explain what I mean. So let's say you have a reaction where um, HCl, or let's say we've got, I'll make up my own reaction, 2A for acid plus B gives us C plus D, okay? So let's say this is a reaction. So the reaction tells us that you need twice as much acid than base. So if you add twice as much acid than base, and that then 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 this reaction would actually work out perfectly and you would have no acid or base left over that is actually what it would look like over here you're adding a perfect stoichiometric amount this is the stoichiometric amounts okay so let's say we have this reaction but let's say i add five parts acid and only one part base so can you see that i am exceeding the stoichiometric ratio. So in this kind of scenario, you would have more acid left over. Okay, so your, your reaction container would look something like this. You would have a lot of acid and you would have a very small amount of base. So then at the end, you would have acid left over. Acid will remain after 
the reaction. Some of the acid will be used up when it reacts with the base, but after they have been reacted with each other, there will be some acid will remain after the reaction. And so that acid, uh, let's quickly make a note here. The left over acid will ionize with water. And what does that do to the pH? It makes it become less than seven. Okay, and then in situation number three, if you have more, why is my computer lagging like that? You're given, you need more RAM, my bro. So, <laughs> so if you have more, um, if you have uh, more base than acid, Shane Kevin's using a 512 megabyte RAM, my bro. This guy needs an eight gig. So, okay, I don't really have 512 megs for those of you that are laughing at me right now. It's a bit better than that. Okay, so more base than acid. Um, then what you would have is a situation that looks like this. You've got uh, lots of base and then a little bit of acid. So then you will have base will uh, remain after the reaction. So then what do bases do? They dissociate. So base will um, dissociate, or let's say leftover base, the left over base will dissociate. And um, what does that do? The pH will then become larger than seven. Okay, so those are the three scenarios that we have. Um, this one here is also a titration. When you do a titration, we don't have any leftovers, okay? But this question that we're busy with here is not a titration. Here they're just taking a whole bunch of this and a whole bunch of that, putting it together, they're letting them react, and then at the end, we know that one of them is left over because look at the pH. The pH at the end is 11.4. So immediately, we don't even have to go work out which one was the limiting reactant. Why? Because look at the pH. It's 11.4. That is very basic. What that means is that here we had the sodium hydroxide. So we had the sodium hydroxide. And then we had acid. We put them together. And after they reacted, we've got a pH of 11.4. That means that the sodium hydroxide was in excess, and so that's the one that is left over. So check this out. In 7.2.2, um, or let me try to think how I want to present this quickly. Hold on. Okay, so what I think we can do is, um, remember that this is when we added them together, but now let's quickly see what it looks like after the reaction. So after the reaction, after both of them, after both the acid and the base have reacted, uh, we're still going to have 800 centimeters cubed. Now that part there confuses some learners. They think, whoa, 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 Mr. Kev, if these two have just reacted with each other and you said that this one is left over, then won't we take away the 500 because that's gone? But what we need to understand is that most of chemistry or all chemistry around us is actually taking place in water. So what this actually is, is 300 centimeters cubed, pretty much of water by the way, with a whole bunch of NaOH molecules floating inside of it. Chemistry is all about water. If we look at this one, it's actually going to be pr approximately 500 centimeter cube of water with a whole bunch of CH3COO molecules floating inside of it. So when the NaOH and the CH3COOH are reacting, we have, now, um, we have now removed all of the CH3COOH, but the volume of 500 remains because that was pretty much water anyways. So we still have 800 centimeter cube of water floating around, and the concentration of the OH minus, which is the leftover stuff, is 2.51 times 10 to the negative three, and that is, um, that is the OH minus concentration. Okay, now where did that Na, where did that, sorry, where did that OH minus come from? That OH minus came from, what did we say on the slide over here? We said that if you have more base than acid, which is the scenario we have now, it says that the um, pH will be larger than seven, which is what we got, and it says that the base will dissociate. So that base is the NaOH. So that NaOH, what happened is that it dissociated after these two things reacted. 
the leftover NaOH dissociated into Na plus and OH minus. Hello, look at that. So then make sure that this reaction is balanced. Yes, it is. So what we can now do is we can say, okay, we can work out, we can, we can take these two values and we can work out the moles of OH minus. That'll then allow us to work out the moles of NaOH that was left over after these two things reacted, right? Um, you guys are gonna see how we're gonna do this now. So we can go work out the moles of NaOH, of, sorry, of OH by saying C equals to N over V and then N is equal to CV, okay? So the number of moles would be its concentration, which is 2.51 times 10 to the minus three, multiplied by this, but it must be in decimeters, like that. And that'll give us, I'm gonna round off to 2.01 times 10 to the minus three, but you don't have to round off. In the memo, there is a range that they're gonna give us. I'll tell you what that is once we finished um, at our final answer. Okay, so now you've got to Think carefully here. So this is the moles of OH minus floating in this container, okay? So then if we can just look at the ratio here, can you see that it's in a one to one ratio? One is to one. So therefore, the moles of NaOH is also 2.01 times 10 to the minus three. Where is that moles? That is the moles of NaOH in this part over here, which is the leftovers after these two things have already reacted. So what we can then do is come all the way back up to here, or actually this question, and we can see how many moles of NaOH we had in the very beginning, which was over here. And how many moles was that? 0 0.05. So we had 0 0.05 mole of NaOH over here. Then at the very end, after the reaction with the CH3 has taken place, how much NaOH do we have? this amount over here. So then, would you agree with me that if I minus these two values, it'll tell me how much NaOH reacted in the reaction with the CH3COOH? Let me explain that again. In the very beginning, before any reaction took place, we have this much NaOH. At the very end, after the reactions have taken place between these two, we still have leftover NaOH, and it's that much over there. So where did the missing amount go? Well, it must have reacted when these two were busy reacting over here. So we can say, therefore, the moles of NaOH reacted must be 0 0.05 minus 2.01 times 10 to the minus three, which would then give us um, 0 0.048 moles. Um, so I know then that in this reaction, the amount of NaOH that reacted was 0 0.048 moles. If I then know that this is a balanced reaction, and it is, and I double checked it, I can see the ratio here is one to one. Then I can work out how much moles of CH3 COOH must have been in this container because I know that all of the CH3COO reacted, so however much I get here is the same as the amount here, okay? So therefore, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so I can say 0 0.048 mole of CH3COOH, okay? And then I can work out the original con concentration of, this, of the CH3COOH, because I know how many moles it has, and I know what its volume is, and so I can then just say C equals to N over V, which is equal to 0 0.048 over 0 0.5, because it's decimeters, and that'll give 0 0.096. And that's moles, uh, concentration, yeah, mole per decimeter. Now, the range of answers that you're allowed to get is 0 0.095 up to 0 0.1, okay?